I'm over here feeling like Wendy Williams. That was a good segue. Let's talk about Wendy Williams. Because Wendy Williams was going crazy. Wendy, she said, she says something. <laughs> Wendy Williams, the way that she was talking to people in this documentary, it I'm trying to tell y'all. You 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 might have thought that she was she was God or something. I don't even know. She the way that she was talking to people was crazy. But it makes sense because she has dementia. She has Graves disease. She's an alcoholic. Um, she has struggles with, you know, substance abuse, like drugs and, and, and things like that. So it makes sense that she's completely out of her mind right now. And it's so interesting because Wendy Williams, number one, I never really watched the Wendy Williams show that much. Well, I didn't I didn't watch it at all. It wasn't it wasn't my demographic. <laughs> it wasn't for me, all right? But Wendy Williams is a legend when it comes to media. She's influenced so many people when it comes to media and her impact will forever be felt in the world of media. And a lot of people loved her. I'm talking about a lot of people loved Wendy Williams, but also a lot of people hated her, if not more people hated her because she was so opinionated. She wasn't afraid to say exactly how she felt. And she was all up in the gossip scene. She was all in that celebrity culture. And that's pretty much all that she really talked about, you know, and a lot of people wished this upon her. And that's so sad. A lot of people wish this upon her. A lot of people said, you know what? Wendy Williams is always talking crap about people. She's always gossiping. She's always, you know, all up in other people's business. And, and she deserves some karma. And a lot of people are happy that this is happening to, to Wendy Williams. And it's just like, to me, that's so corny. Like, I don't care if you if you if you hate somebody, if you just if you despise somebody. I don't, I don't care, bro. Stop wishing ill intent on other people. Stop trying to curse other people. Stop trying to say, oh, well, karma's going to get you. Stop, like, stop trying to say all that. It's not up to us. God is the ultimate equalizer. God is going to level the playing field for everybody. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God is going to figure it out. Our responsibility is to, number one, love people, but not love people by the way or the standard by which the world tells us to love people. The world tells us that love is love. The world tells us that you are whatever you say you are, but we know that's not the truth. Our, our responsibility is to love people truly how God sees them, not their current struggle not their current situation, not their current, you know, addiction. But our responsibility is to love people the way that God sees them. Because we're all made in the image of God. So why am I going to wish that Wendy Williams gets sick or gets dementia? Or why am I going to be happy that she's going through this kind of stuff? We're all made in the image of God. It's corny. It's so corny to sit here and, and wish that somebody be sick or be happy that somebody's sick. That's so corny because you know what's going to happen? It's the same thing's going to happen to you. And then you're going to be sitting there looking for some sympathy. And ain't nobody going to give it to you. Ain't nobody going to give it to you. But this documentary was so sad um, for so many different reasons. Let me show you this clip real quick. I saw I found this clip on... Uh, on uh, TikTok, just for those of y'all who don't know what I'm talking about. Hi, welcome back. So, you know me for being a very open and truthful person, and I've got more to the story for you. Even if they don't know the Wendy Williams show, everybody instantly falls in love with me. Former talk show host Wendy Williams has been diagnosed with progressive aphasia and frontal temporal dementia, according to her representatives. The Mayo Clinic says the condition affects communication, 
personality, and the ability to understand language. Her representatives say they publicized her diagnosis to correct inaccurate and hurtful rumors about her health. After questions were raised regarding her condition, like losing her words, acting erratically, and having a difficult time understanding financial transactions, Williams' care team says, The decision to share this news was difficult and made after careful consideration, not only to advocate for understanding and compassion for Wendy, but to raise awareness about aphasia and frontotemporal dementia. Williams is currently under court-ordered guardianship. CNN has reached out to Williams' care team for further comment. It's so sad to see her in that state. And like I said, I was never like a fan of Wendy Williams. I was never a hater either. Like, it just, it, it is what it is. Like, I see you doing well in media. I see your success. That's amazing. That's great. The content is not for me, but it is what it is, you know? But it's sad to see her in a, in a state in her life where she can barely even piece together a sentence sometimes. And to be honest with you, watching the documentary... A lot of what she's going through is a result of her own decision making. She abused drugs back in the day. She said that, you know, she she had to work the overnight shift on the radio. And in order to have energy and have charisma and, and you know, just to be awake, she would do a few bumps. And that turned into like, you know, a, a year's years of of abusing cocaine obviously that has an impact on your health and then now you look at what she's doing currently is now she's abusing alcohol who knows how long she's been abusing alcohol who knows but obviously we know that that has an impact on her health as well and it's so interesting because wendy williams extremely successful celebrity, whole lot of money, very loving family. If you guys watch this documentary, you're going to find out that her family is so loving. It almost it almost made me cry at certain points of how loving her family is. It cuz it's like, bro, this is how a family is supposed to be. They're supposed to love you. They're supposed to try to protect you. They're supposed to want to have your best interest in mind. But she has everything that you think a person would want. But yet, there's still a void in her spirit that is leading her to drugs, that is leading her to, towards alcohol. There's still a void. Even after she obtained everything that she was seeking to obtain, all the success, all the notoriety, all the fame, there's still a void. And she's, she's trying to fill that void. She's trying to fill that void. And in her trying to fill that void with drugs and alcohol, she literally made herself ill. It's so sad. And it just goes to show you Ecclesiastes, everything under the sun is vain. That's what the book of Ecclesiastes says. Everything under the sun is vain. The book of Ecclesiastes is one of my favorite books in the Bible. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible. Some people think it's kind of like, you know, grim and kind of, you know, negative, but it's just real. It is what it is. Like this earth is going to pass away. All the things that we accumulate here on earth, the money, the cars, the clothes, the 401k, the investments, the, the, the Bitcoin, the relationships, all of those things ultimately are going to pass away. So now what are we left with? Well, you, you either know Jesus Christ or you don't. So if you don't know him, you getting dropped off in hell. If you know him, then you're spending inter eternity in heaven with him. And this is the void that so many people are trying to fill. So many people are trying to fill this void after they get the fame, after they get the money, after they get the fortune. This was for, the, for one of the first times I really realized sitting watching this Wendy Williams documentary, I turned to my wife and I said, you know what? 
watching this, I understand why these celebrities take their own life. I get it. I under, I'm not saying that it's right, but I'm just saying I understand. Seeing the point that she is at her life, like her mental state, her emotional state, her physical state, the people around her, her financial state, seeing where she is in her life and how she's processing that and receiving it, I, I, I understand why these people make that decision. I don't agree with it. I don't think that's ever the right decision, but I could see how you would be led to make that decision, especially if you don't know God. Especially if you don't know God, because what other hope do you have if you don't know God? What other hope do you have? Your hope is in your money. Okay, well, look, Wendy Williams, Wells Fargo, they locked up all her money. They appointed a third party guardian to manage her finances. Do you know how wild that is? The bank where she kept her money appointed a company that she knows nothing about, that she doesn't know anybody personally in that company, to manage her money. <laughs> Do you know how crazy that is? So, okay, now you don't have any money. Okay, you can't put your hope in the money because you don't have the money anymore. Your talk show, you can't put your hope in in in. in a talk show because it got canceled. You don't have that anymore. Your family, your family has all, has been distanced. They still love you, but now there's a distance between you and your family. Okay, to a certain extent, you don't have that anymore. Your physical health, you don't have that anymore. Your mental health, you don't have that anymore. Your emotional health, you don't have that. So what can you put your hope in? If you don't know God, what can you really put your hope in? Because all of these things are going to pass away. Category by category, they are going to pass away. Even in our own life. In our own life, they are going to pass away. We were, we, we were only, we're only going to be young for so long. I remember when I was 20. Now I'm 30. I'm like, bro, that's crazy. I'm 30. I thought I would be in a walker at 30. I thought I would be in a in a in a old person's home at 30. This is me when I was a teenager, like thinking about a 30-year-old, I'm thinking like, "Yo, uh, you're washed up, bro. You need to hang it up. You need to go do something different because you're 30, you're old, nobody cares." That's how I used to think. But now I kind of realize like, "Oh, okay." 30 is actually really young. 40 is actually really young. 50 is actually really young. 60 is actually really young. 70? Hmm. You're pushing it. You're still young from the standpoint of eternity. God still views you as a baby because you're you're 70, but from an earthly standpoint, most people nowadays, they're not making it past 75, 80. Most people are not making it past 75, 80. The food sucks. Our environment sucks. Our health sucks. Our physical fitness sucks. Like, most people ain't making it that long. So, your youth is fleeting. Your youth is always running away from you. And we're sitting here always trying to chase it, but it just keeps running and running and running. And we'll never be able to catch it until we pass away. Same thing with our finances. We build up all of our finances, our savings accounts, our 401ks, our investments, our, our pensions, all of these things that we put so much faith and hope in, all of those things are going to deplete. They're not going to last forever. It's fleeting. It's literally running away. It's slipping through our fingertips. Our health slipping through our fingertips. I understand some people take care of their, their bodies more than other people. But regardless, we can't hold on to our health forever. 
it's always going to be slipping through our fingertips. Our family, our family is always going to be getting older. They're, they're going to have different perspectives. They're going to have different opinions. They're going to have different career choices. They're, good, they're all going to have different paths in life, right? And on top of that, they're going to pass away. Or we're going to pass away first. Everything is slipping away. I, I'm not trying to be so negative right now to, like, to start things off. But I'm just trying to make the point that everything that we know in our life right now is slipping away. Minute by minute, second by second, it's slipping away. So what can you put your hope in? What can you put your faith in? If everything on earth is slipping away, what can we put our faith in? Well, we can only put our faith in the one who is eternal. The one who will always be here and the one who has always been here. Jesus Christ. That's the one that we can truly put our faith in and have no worry. And when I say have no worry, I mean have no worry in the sense that Jesus ain't going nowhere. He's always going to be here. Now, we might have worries and we might have hardships and we might have trials and tribulations in our life. But that doesn't mean that Jesus is not with us in those hardships, in those trials and tribulations. It's just life. It just is what it is. We live in a sinful world. Things are going to happen that suck. Things are going to happen that don't make sense. Things are going to happen that are unfair. And we're all going to have moments where we're going to be like, yo, God, what the heck is going on? I thought I was with you, but now I'm going through all these crazy things. Like, what is really going on, God? We're all going to have those moments. But that's okay because we're human. But ultimately, we have to understand that Jesus is the solution that everybody is searching for. And only a few find. Just keep it real. Everyone is searching for the solution. The solution is Jesus. But only a few will truly find him. The Bible says that the road is narrow. But the path to destruction is wide. There's a lot of people on that wide road heading towards destruction. There's only a few people on that narrow road who really know Jesus Christ. And it doesn't have to be like that. But ultimately, we have free will and we have a choice that we can make for ourselves. And that's a beautiful thing, but it's also a terrifying thing. Because oftentimes we make the wrong decision. Now, for Wendy Williams, you know, I, I just pray that she can find Jesus Jesus is always at the door. He's waiting. He's a gentleman. He's not going to he's not going to break down the door. But we have to let him in. We have to open that door. We have to open our hearts. So I I just pray that Wendy Williams opens her heart to Jesus Christ. Because that's the only person that's going to be able to heal what she's going through. And guess what? Maybe she won't be, let's just say, for example, she gives her life to Jesus. And this goes for anybody. Maybe you won't be healed physically. Maybe you'll still suffer here on earth. And that sucks. But guess what? You have a hope. You have an eternal hope. And the Bible says that he will wipe away every tear. He will wipe away every tear. So even if we're going through things and it doesn't make sense, we're praying for healing and we're not getting healing, physical healing, just know that when you're with Jesus Christ, when you have your faith in Jesus, you have an eternal hope. 
and he will wipe away every single tear, everything that you were worried about, every stress, every anxiety, every anxious thought that crossed your mind here on earth, God will wipe all of that away. You have an eternal hope. Remember that. That's Wendy. Go watch the documentary. It's, this is starting to sound like a brand deal. I promise you, this is not a brand deal. <laughs> I've actually never done a brand deal. I've been reached out to quite a bit to do brand deals. Um, you know what's funny? One company reached out to me and they were like, yo, we love what you're doing on YouTube. Do you want to promote this vape pen? I'm like, dog, clearly you don't love what I'm doing on YouTube because you don't even watch what I do on YouTube. If you're coming to me asking me to promote a vape pen, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what the bag look like. I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to do it. Not me. Somebody else might go check so-and-so. They might be willing to sell out. I'm chilling. I'm good. I don't need it. I got God. 